man shit wavy. simple good morning good morning good morning how's everybody doing this morning good morning shabbat shalom everybody shabbat shalom i hope your day is going well i hope that your week was truly blessed i hope everything went according to your desires I hope the most I really have truly blessed you over and abundantly with love, kindness, and joy. I hope he really has truly blessed you. I hope he has given your offsprings the desires of their heart, which is wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word. I hope he really has done a lot of things in your life this week. And those who are practicing the Passover, I hope that you all have a blessed Passover. I hope that the Most High truly has blessed you and given you all the, the things that you need so that your Passover will be great. You know? I hope he truly has. Um, we did pass over last night. Um, it was small. It wasn't nothing great. But we just did it in remembrance last night. Um, uh, it was it was nice. Um, I said I was going to invite some friends, but... It was at the last minute, and I just was, I hope that the, the people that I did say I was going to invite don't get mad with me because I didn't invite them because, um, it was, I just 
kept it small for me and my wife and everything and um <clears throat> I just hope everybody else enjoy your day. My week has been an okay week. Um I can't really complain. But when I was at the doctor yesterday, right? I was talking to my doctor about some things that was going on with me. And I come to understand whenever you're on a mission and you're trying to do something for yourself, <clears throat> the most high will, not the most high, but the Hashitan will put things in your way to get you distracted. I mean when you got when you when you on a good path in life and when you trying to make things happen and you trying to just do the will of the father what I kinda understand is that the Hashitan would throw things in the way to see how you will handle it. And sometimes it really can derail you let me go ahead because I can talk about it. I'm going to talk about it in a few minutes. Let us go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 20. Let us go on to Exodus chapter 20. Verses 1 through 17. Okay. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And it reads, And I spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah thy El, uh, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other else before me. And thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that in the water under the earth. And thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, thy heir, am a jealous heir, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy El in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy El. In it thou shalt not do any works, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy manservants, nor thy maidservants. Nor thy um, mace, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gate. For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy day belong upon the land which Yahuwah thy El giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors, and thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservants, nor his maidservants, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let us read. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, die to the kingdom, power to the glory forever and ever. So let it be. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, today is my wife's birthday. Today is my wife's birthday. I know some people who may listen to me don't celebrate it. I understand. You know, I don't have, you know, I understand. But today is my wife's birthday. I'm acknowledging the day that she was came into this world. And the day of her existence. And the day that the Most High started to use her as a beacon of light upon the earth. So I am asking you all, if you can, if you're listening to me and hear my voice, you know... I'm not asking you to send no cash apps or nothing like that, but just just tell a happy birthday if you can. Um, you know, she went and got her hair did yesterday or the day yesterday. It's growing. It's really nice. She's a beautiful young lady, and her hair is growing. It's very pretty. 
And uh, she had been using, what you been using on your hair, baby? Talk loud <laughs> so they can hear you, okay? A special oil. Okay. <laughs> Created by yours truly. All right. <laughs> okay, what kind of oil is it? It's a hair scalp growth oil. Talk loud. This oil uh, wakes the follicles up mm -hmm. in the scalp mm -hmm. that have been asleep. It's for thinning. It's for... Um, it does a lot of different things, but it's really for hair growth. Mm -hmm. And um, you can actually put it on your eyebrows, and it fills it in as well. Mm -hmm. So this oil is um, special. So if you want to get your hair growing, and your, and you know, your get your hair growing, fill in the thinning. Mm -hmm. um, even the men, for some of the bald you Spot. know, the spots and mm -hmm. the, what is the receding hairlines. Right. Um, <clears throat> you can have. You can get this oil at my. Uh, mm -hmm. CBY Wellness, mm -hmm. and um, call me, text me. Mm -hmm. You've been doing a lot of good things with your spa, huh? Yes. What are some of the results of your spa? Just to be able to help people and hear the uh -huh. testimonies um, coming from my clients, people calling back saying the energy that they have, mm -hmm. um, people who are not able to help regular bowel movements, um, people who are going So you helping people direct, have a good a regular bowel movement? Bowel movements, depression, mm -hmm. arthritis, mm -hmm. um, joint pains, yeah. Right. We know some other stuff too, but we're not allowed to say yeah, that yeah. Um, on the internet. But um, it's very helpful, huh? Yes, it is. Is it time or is it like ministry? What is it? Talk to I me. I do not call it work. Uh-huh. Um, I see it now, my purpose that mm -hmm. God gave me, and the reason why it was created. And each client is different. Right. So I call it the ministry, my ministry, his ministry. Call it your, his, call his, it your his, mission. His, mission, yeah. Yeah, it's your mission, mission to help people. So you, so your hair growing, your eyebrows growing. <laughs> oh man, I'm in a mess, huh? <laughs> You're helping people with arthritis and bowel movements. You're Depression, praying. Everything. Yeah, yeah, you're praying for people, putting your hands on people. All that, huh? It's a it's a whole wellness center, right? Whole wellness. Right. Nutrition. For real. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wanna, you know, support Breaking Sean Ho's Ministries, uh, support my wife. Go get yourself taken care of. Because I do know that I have some, have some foot fungus um, medicine in this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's helping with my feet fungus. So, and athletic feet. Yes. So, and it's all natural. So, if you want something, you know, I think my wife's products are very potent and powerful and helping the body. I'm not going to say healing the body. I'm going to say it's helping the body. You know, because of, you know, whatever's going on in the world. But let me finish telling you all about <clears throat> something, right? I had a dream this week. And my dream was, I have a garden in my backyard. So, <clears throat> I had some above grounds. Um gardens but I have one that's in the ground and the dream that I had this week right <clears throat> is that I had I had already planted some zucchini some squash and some okras in the in ground portion of my garden but in my dream I had to pick those those plants up <clears throat> out of the ground that I had put them on but put them in because the ground was not able to, the ground did not have any nutrients for the plants to be able to help the plants grow. So I had to take those those flowers out of that ground because and repot them and replant them because the Georgia clay would not allow the plants to grow. So I had to do that in my garden because of what I was doing and I was totally misunderstanding the message in the dream because 
when I actually planted my flower, my, 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 my vegetables in the ground, I dug a, a hole about this big. But I put garden soil inside of the hole. So when I put the plants inside of the hole, it would not be dealing with the red clay. It would be dealing with the nutrients, the, the, the potting soil that was, was supposed to be in there. So I made sure that when I put my plant in the pot in the ground, it had good potting soil around all the plants. Huh? That's why the peach tree uh -huh. blooms and produces the way it does, but the apples you didn't do that. But I put some I put some other stuff down there though. But okay. So that's what I did and that was a dream and right now it's like, oh man, okay. And this week I have been feeling some kind of way because the dream wasn't because I had said Man, I've been online for about five years. I've been teaching for about five. I've been online for about. A, I've been online for a while, haven't I? We've been online since. I've been online for about. No. Since. I've been online for about six years, seven years. You. I was on you. I was on Facebook for about. I've been on Facebook seven years, but I've been on YouTube for about two and a half. Right. And my audience. My audience on Facebook has not been the way I think it should have been. So I was very disappointed because of my audience. My audience don't give me no feedback. My audience don't tell me good message. My audience don't do anything. So because my audience don't do anything and give me any type of responses, I feel some kind of way. <clears throat> and... Like just a minute ago, the most I was saying to me, what you're going through is not about your audience. What you're going through is about you. It's all about you. Because those things, those events are going to happen. And it's just to see where you are and what your character is like when your audience don't say good word. When your audience don't even want to buy your dinner. When your audience don't do anything for you, but what are you going to do in spite of what your audience is not or is doing for you? Even though I haven't had any contributions from my audience, I haven't asked for anything from them, but I have, I know I have a hundred faithful people that listen to me weekly. But they now have not one time said, let me take you out to dinner. Let me do this. Because you put your life on the line for us. You do these things here. You do that for us. You're dedicated to Even though I do this every week, I have not had people to come out on the line and say, let me do something for you. Because you're trying to enlighten us and help us. And I felt some kind of way about that. But the most high showed me through this text today, it ain't about, it ain't about my audience. It's all about me. You know? So, I can't complain about it. I'm not going to say that whether my audience do anything for me or not. Whether you even just say, thank you for your message. Thank you for your time and energy that you give me. I can't be concerned about you as my audience. I just have to continue to do my will, my purpose. You know? So, let us go to Mark chapter 4. Let us go to Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> Mark chapter 4 and Mark chapter 4 verses 21 through 25 but I'm not going to even deal with this these are this is the key verse this is the key verse verse 25 but I'm going to read 21 and 24 but I'm going to jump back up to verse 8 verses 1 through 8 but this is the key, this is the very important part of Mark chapter 4. Okay? And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to put under a brush or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid 
which shall not be manifested. Neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. Take heed to what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And, to, and unto you that here shall more be given. This is the key verse right here. For he that hath, to him shall it be given. And he that has not, for him shall be taken even that which he has. Let me read it differently in the inspired, in the Joseph Smith translation of the inspired Bible. You're going to understand it better from the inspired Bible. And it reads, It is a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, it is less than all the seeds that be in the, in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and become the greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it so when it says for he that has to him shall it be given and he that has not from him shall be taken even that he which he has okay so now I'm gonna read you something and then I'm gonna jump into this parable because I want us to understand something when it says for he that has it's talking about your hearing it's talking about your hearing basically it's also talking about your belief. I use belief instead of faith because faith is an action word. Hearing is a mental capacity word. Belief is a mental capacity word. Faith is an action word. Okay? But let me give you the definitions before I get started on what I'm going to give you today. Okay, when it says measure to meet, we're talking about compare. Compare. Compare starts in the 14th century. It means to set or bring things together in fact or in, in contemplation. And to examine the relations they bear to each other. Meaning words. It means that you're going to compare what you know and what it really is. And see which one comes out to be the best. It says, with a view of a, a certain their agreements or disagreements regard or treat as equal. Basically, when you're comparing something, we're talking about what you're hearing and what you're going through hearing. We're talking about your hearing, right? So, you got to be able to compare what you're hearing to the truth. To see if it's balanced out. Because if you if you don't compare what you're hearing to the truth, you don't know if it'll balance out. You really, really would not know if it balanced out. So when you hear something, you got to compare it to something else to other to something else to in order for it to see. If it is right, wrong, good, or indifferent. That's what compares means. Okay? The word substance. In a general sense means bring something existing by itself. That, that which really is or exists. Equally applicable to the matter or spirit. Substance means essential nature real or essential parts, being, essential, I mean, essence, material, that which supports accidents. Essential means basically the substance. 
Substance means material, evidence, things that you actually can see. So when you're comparing something, you're comparing the substance that's in reality. That is, when you're comparing something, you're comparing, and one of the most important things that you should compare is, you should compare the Bible to everything that you hear and that you see. Because the Bible is true in its essence. And the reason why I say that, it says, according to the According to Genesis World Records, as of 1995, the Bible is the best-selling book of all times with an estimated 5 billion copies sold and distributed. So when you compare, when you, the substance is the evidence of things out here. So when you want to compare all the events Everything that's going on in the world today, you have to compare it to something. And the best thing that you can compare it to is the Bible. Okay? Understand that, the Biblio. Okay, so now let me read you something. On the FederalReserve.gov website, right? It says, what is digital what is the central bank digital currency? A CBDC is a digital form of central bank money that is widely available to the general public. Central bank money refers to the money that is of a liability of the central banks. In the United States, there are currently two types of central bank money. Physical currency issued by the Federal Reserve and digital balance held by commercial banks at the Federal Reserve. While Americans have long held money predominantly in digital form, for example, in bank accounts, payment apps, or through online transactions, a CBDC would differ from existing digital money available to the general public because a CBDC would be a liability of the Federal Reserve and not a commercial bank. Listen to that part. If the United States go to a CBDC, the ultimate control of that CBDC in in to the general public because listen to this a CBDC would differ from existing digital money such as Apple Pay bank accounts and online transition <clears throat> it would differ from that okay what you have today a digital currency will totally be different okay a CB a CBDC would be different from the existing digital money available to general public because a CBDC would be a liability of the Federal Reserve and not and not of a commercial bank. So that that's saying if the CBDC comes out. If a CBDC comes out, that means that the Federal Reserve will have more control over the CBDC than the commercial banks would. That means that whatever is taking place at that point in time, the Federal Reserve will be more in control of it than the banking system. Understand that. That's number one. Number two, the Fed coin. The Fed coin has a bipartisan support by Jay Powell, appointed as Federal Reserve Chairman by President Donald Trump. I just told you, the Federal Reserve is going to be in control of the CBDC. And, uh, and um, Jay Powell is appointed over the Federal Reserve. So the money that you're starting to have it's not going to be controlled by the banking systems anymore. It's going to be controlled by the Federal Reserve System. 
Okay? Then it says that the Federal Reserve is conducting research into issuing a digital currency on its own and also partnership with other central banks and the banks for international settlement. Janet Yellen appointed as Fed chairperson, chair, Fed by President Obama, said last week it makes sense for central banks to be looking at issuing sovereign digital currency, which would be controlled by the Federal Reserve and not the banks. That's why so many people are having issues now with the banking system because it is transitioning from the, the, the commercial banks being in control of your finances. It is going to the Federal Reserve being in control of your finances. Okay? And it said they gave different state reasons. Powell is more conservative and his focus is on addressing the potential competitive threat of Bitcoin and digital currency from, uh, from countries such as China. However, it is really wanted to make the dollar more competitive against the yang. Then he want he would just abuse federal credit lists. Yellen nodded to a progressive idea saying that the Fed coin, which is getting ready to come out, it was, it was initiated on Sunday. Okay? The Fed coin was initiated on Sunday. And what happened on Sunday at Costco, Sharon? Their systems went down two or three times that day they said. For real? Mm -hmm. Because they was updating the system, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And somebody else said the system went down at Walmart. The system went down at Walmart. Okay. And also I had a friend last night tell me that, hey, some stores that you're going to now are not taking cash. So we're starting to shift, okay? So it says, Yellen nodded a progressive idea saying that a Fed con could help address hurdles to financial inclusions in the U.S. among low-income households. They always use an excuse to do something. Now they said we need to bring digital currency in because of China and also because of low income. However, she if she really wants the unbreakable, unbankable to be able to open accounts, then she would just reply, repeal anti-money laundering and other regulations that penalize a bank for crimes committed by its clients. Both Powell and Yellen statements are in, in I mean, disingenuous. A fair coin is coming. Listen. A Fed coin is coming because it is necessary. Allows us to explain the two reasons. The first reason is cynical, and the second one is more. But I'm not going to get into the reasons, okay? But I'm going to get into them, but not on this article. Then, okay, long awaited Fed digital payment system to launch in July of 2023. I'm going to read a little bit of this. The Fed coin is going to be launched in July of 2023. It's the pilot program started on the 1st of April. It's going to be launched in 2020, July 2023. It says the federal digital payment system, which it promised, will help speed up ways money moves. Would we'll debate in July. Now, Fed, Fed now, as it will be known, will create a leading edge payment system that is resilient, adaptive, and acceptable, says Richmond Fed President, who is the program executive sponsor. The system will allow bill payments, more transfers such as paychecks and distribution, disbursements and disbursements from the government, as well as a host of other consumer activities to move more rapidly at a lower cost according to the program goal. Participants will complete a training and certification process in early April. That was what was happening yesterday, last week according to the Fed announcement. 
with the launch drawing near, we urge find. Listen, listen. This is the reason why people are having problems with their bank accounts. With the launch drawing near, we urge financial institutions and their industry partners to move full stream ahead with participation to join the Fed now service. The program executive, first vice president, Boston Fed, which helps spearhead the project under the institution. Okay, the Fed now program will be launched in January. Who will be in control of it? The, the Federal Reserve Systems. Why are they doing it? Because they say that they they feel that it will help the payment systems move through faster. But let me tell you what Dan Sanchez says. Okay. The governor of Florida is trying to stop digital currency from moving into Florida. But it says, as the Federal Reserve looks to monetize or modernize banking, two potential 24 uh, president candidates have accused the central banks of seeking to use a proposed digital dollar to control American finance. Although Fed officials have committed to no such plan, Florida's governors alleged last weekend that a federal-made digital U.S. dollar will help the government block, listen to this, the, the, that a Fed-made Fed digital U.S. dollar will let the government block transitions like buying a rifle or selling up too much gas. He, he added, saying, speaking in a Pennsylvania conference on Saturday, they're going to try to impose an ESG agenda, referring to private sector policies aimed at advancing environmental, social, and governing principles, which conservative lawmakers across the country have been pushing to curve. That means that once they put this digital currency into effect, you will have a social credit score. And when you have a social credit score, every time you do something wrong, it goes against your social credit score. It's going to be like a financial credit score. All of it is going to be combined into one. So the more stuff you do wrong, the lower your credit score goes. And the more your, the lower your credit score goes, the less you're going to be able to do in the population. But I'm going to put this on the um I'm going to put this on my YouTube account. The link. Yeah, on my all the links I'm going to put them on my YouTube account. But I I really urge you to look at this stuff, look at this information because this really going to affect everyone in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Once they employ the digital currency, it's going to draw inflation. When it draws inflation, that means that your dollar is going to be worthless. And you got to understand that you need to start making moves now to protect your dollar bill. If you're going to take your money out of the bank, I wouldn't invest in it. I wouldn't put it into another bank. Because all the money, all the, all the CBDC is going to be controlled by the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve is going to be, the banking system is going to be partnering up with the Federal Reserve to make sure everything goes well. So I would not, if you're going to take your money out the bank, I would not turn around and put it back into another bank. I'll find some other means to be able to put your money, make your money useful. But I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. But now let us go back to Mark chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1, because we're talking about your belief. This is all about your belief. This is, did I give a title of the text? Okay, the title of the text today is, because that information right there is based on the Bible, based on, this is one information, but the Bible gives you something totally different. But it also tells you that these things are going to happen, but how you're going to do, how you're going to respond to everything that you just heard. 
How are you going to respond to what you just heard from what I read? And then how are you going to respond to what I'm getting ready to talk about? Because you got to compare the Bible to what you heard. You got to compare the Bible to what you're going through and see how you're going to implement and see how you're going to respond to all of that. Okay? The title of the text today is How You Live Your Life Depends on Your Understanding of the Word. How You Live Your Life Depends on Your Understanding of the Word. The two words today means compare substance, compare the word, compare evidence, and see if they make sense. See what, which one outweighs the other. Okay? So let us go to this very familiar passage in Mark chapter 4 verse 1. <clears throat> okay? I don't have much time, maybe about 45 minutes. I started at 1130. I said 1140. I said 1130. I got, an, I got about 45 minutes. Okay, and it, and it began again in Mark chapter 4 verse 1. It's, and it reads, And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So Yahshua was teaching to a crowd of people by the sea. And he taught them many things by parables. And said unto them in his doctrine. The reason why he taught them in parables. Because they could not understand. The real true definition or the real true meaning. Of what was at what he was actually saying because they was not ready for what he was trying to teach them. They was very ignorant in his teaching, so he had to use parables so that they could be able to understand. Because he could not he could not teach them because of their educational level. Okay, and it says hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And the reason why he's using parables like farming and stuff like that, sowing and weeping, and because that was the that was the lifestyle back in the day. Back in the day was the lifestyle of farming. So he basically used a lot of parables dealing with farming illustrations or parables of, of farming. Because that's what they was used to. They can easily understand that. Okay. It says. Hearken behold there went out a sower. To sow. You can use that in many variations. You can say. A man that went out and planted in his yard. Like I gave you. Like I told you. I went and planted some, some stuff in my garden. I was I was a sower, sowing, planting my vegetables in my garden. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Some fell by the wayside. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Understanding that we're comparing, we're using the two words compare and substance, but we also talking about a spiritual belief, your spiritual belief. How you're able to stand on your spiritual belief. Is when you compare your the Bible to what's actually going on in the world today, and what actually what people are saying, and see if the Bible is able to stand up against what people are saying. Okay, my and then it says it, in verse four again. It says, and it came to pass as he sold some. 
fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. See, a lot of the times when people get started on a journey, On their spiritual growth. That's why I said earlier. Every time you start something. Something going to try to stop you. From doing what you're supposed to be doing. Every time I start an exercise regimen. Something always stopped me from doing it. And I was so. And I'm so determined. To continue to work out. I, that's why I was telling my doctor. That's what I recognized yesterday. In the doctor's office, me and my son started. We got into an argument. I was working out one time. I messed up my ankle. Every time I get started on doing something positive, something always stop me or try to derail me from doing it. Just like I just said earlier in my message, you know, even though my listeners haven't done anything for me, I felt discouraged, but I cannot allow you to stop me from doing what I got to do. Even though you hear this stuff on Fed Corn and what they're getting ready to try to do and how they're going to try to implement it and what they're planning on doing, they can use it for cynical stuff and it could be wicked. You still have to find a way to continue to move. You cannot allow something to stop you from <clears throat> being the best that you can be. That's good. And see, that's the hardest part about it because he said, and some fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and destroyed it, devoured it. You're going to have challenges in your life. You're going to have obstacles that get in the way. You're going to have your wife act crazy. You're going to have your husband to throw temper tantrums. You're going to have these things. You're going to have being unemployed. You're going to have the ups and downs of life. But my first point is, the first character that I recognize in verse 4 is vulnerable people. Vulnerable means in need of special care. In need of special care, support or protection because of age, disabilities, or risk of abuse or neglect, to physical, to physical or emotional attack or harm. See, vulnerable people are subject to be devoured up because they are incapable of being able to support themselves. See, he used this because... This was at the beginning of something. See, when you're starting something, you become very vulnerable because the lack of information, the lack of strength that you have in that. So when you're vulnerable, you, you, you're subject to become a prey. You're subject to become destroyed because the lack of protection that you have, either from physical or spiritual. That's why you got to continue to push and push and push and do not allow anything to get in your way because they're going to come at it. People know that you're new to the game. They're going to come at you. People know that you're weak and they feel like you're broke, busted, and disgusted or they see something about you. Yeah, they're going to come at you. They sure are. They're going to come at you to see how far they can mess you up. Let us go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. Because right now, with everybody's financial situation, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to the banks. You're vulnerable to the Federal Reserve. You're going to be vulnerable to these people in how you figure out how you're going to manage your situation. How you need to educate yourself so that you won't be so vulnerable. Right now, society as a whole is vulnerable to the banking system. The bank, I just let, look at some last night. The, 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 um, the uh, post office credit union are not allowing people to take their money out of the banks. 
we are vulnerable to this system. So they can easily destroy us because we're so dependent on the banks. Okay, Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Okay, and it says, when, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his mind. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. See, a lot of people... I, the information I just read and every time I teach, when I when when people don't truly understand what I'm saying, they can be easily vulnerable to people that come in and say, nah, he don't know what he's talking about. He just talking, he just running his mouth, he don't know what he's saying. He lying. But because you don't go back and study for yourself to see if my words are valid. You're going to be vulnerable to somebody else who's more stronger than you, more wiser than you, more educated than you, more easy. You can be easily persuaded because you're not strong. You need protection from somebody else. Let us go to Luke chapter 8. Verse 12. Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Because we need, if we don't have the understanding of what we need to do at this point in our society, we're going to be jacked up. Luke chapter 8, verse 12, it says, But those by the wayside are they that hear, then come to the devil, then come to the devil, and take away the words out of their mind, lest they should believe and be saved. See, right now, you have a lot of people uh, at a moment where, man, what should, I heard what he just said. Is it true? What should I do? And then they'll go to somebody. Oh, Lando need don't need to be telling everybody to do this and that and the other. <laughs> or... They'll yeah, listen to somebody and say, well, I, I don't think it really going to happen. I'm just going to keep all my money in the bank anyway. And then to persuade that person not to do something because they don't listen to someone else and because they haven't educated themselves enough to make a good decision. You're not going to make a good decision because... You don't quite understand what's going on. And you're not going to make a good decision because you allow somebody else to come in and persuade you not to do it. Not to make a decision, but to trust in the Federal Reserve System. Okay, and let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 12. Listen, this is the reason why we become vulnerable too. Let me go to verse 11. And it says, For this cause God sent, God shall send them strong delusions that they should not believe, that they should believe a lie. Okay, but my point is this right here in verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasures in unrighteousness. See, a lot of people can read this information right here. They can be, man, he said this about this and they said this about that. Some people can still be saying in the back of their mind, man, that ain't going to never happen. Man, that ain't going to never happen, man. That ain't going to never happen. I ain't going to believe the government going to let that happen. Huh? What you saying, Sharon? People still saying in the back of their mind because they're upon a strong delusion. Man, that ain't going to never happen. That ain't gonna never happen. I ain't gonna believe that. I ain't gonna need. To get, I ain't gonna need to invest the stuff. I ain't gonna believe that. Uh -uh. They because they're strong delusion. 
they still gonna have pleasure and unrighteousness instead of just trying to do what's right for themselves because the information has been put right in front of them. The information has been put right in front of them. They all told you what's going on and what's going to happen. And the people still say, nah. And they still scheming and putting it in food. <laughs> nah, it ain't going to happen. Nah, that ain't going to happen. That's the process, that's the thought process of a vulnerable person. A vulnerable person, the delusion is so strong, he'd rather say, I'm going to still keep my money in the bank. I'm going to still do this and I'm going to still do that. When they all told you the Federal Reserve going to be controlling the banking system. Let's go back to Mark chapter 5. I mean chapter 4 verse 5. Say it out loud. So that means they I can't, can't hear you. So that means they can stop your funding, your money. Yes, they can do whatever they can. Once this, once this CBDC kicks in, they can turn it on off. They can turn it on off. They can do whatever they want to do to it, how they want to do to it, and the way they want to do to it. And you have no control. That's why I just said, if you look at the people who've been going to these banks, the banks are telling people, "We ain't got your money." We ain't got your money. Well, your money ain't deposited yet. We can't get you your money. That's controlling your money. That's controlling every. You got people who need to pay bills and can't pay bills because the banks are saying, even credit unions are saying, we ain't got no money. Your money ain't hit your account yet. You got to wait two more weeks. Right. But something came in my mind today, my heart today, and said, Go to the ATM machine and see can you withdraw money at the bank. Go to a banking machine. Go to ATM. If you're having problems getting money out of the, the bank, go to the ATM machine and see can you withdraw money at the ATM machine. Don't go directly to your bank. Go to the ATM machine. Because the ATM machine is going to allow you to withdraw money. You may have to get a $3 penalty, but if you go to the ATM machine, you can get money, but you may not be able to get money directly out of the bank because of what the banking system is doing. But if you need cash, go to the ATM machine. Huh? Yeah, until it starts giving. <laughs> Verse 5. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it scorched it. And because it had no root, it withered away. Mm. When problems come, <coughs> when problems come, or an insincere person, an insincere person. You got vulnerable. You got vulnerable characters. You got insincere characters. An insincere character is not express, not expressing genuine, a genuine feeling. An insincere person is hypocritical. Really, don't mean what he's saying. He just talking. He just doing because soon as something happens, he's only doing it because it feels good at the moment. He's not willing to go through the moments of test. He's not willing to endure the test. And see right now, you're going to have to find out which character you have. Do you have a sense do you have a vulnerable vulnerable character? Meaning in need of special care, uh, support, protection, being of age, disability, risk of abuse or neglect, to physical, emotional attack by, or harm. Are you that type of person that needs help? Do you have a vulnerable character? Do you have an insincere character? Means that you're hypocritical? Because it's all gonna come out. Because I heard, I heard a lot of people say, "Nah, I ain't gonna do that. Nah, I ain't gonna do that." Until they put into the fire, and as soon as they were put into the fire, they changed their mind immediately. They changed their mind immediately. 
Let's go to Mark. No, let us go to Mark. No, let us go to Luke chapter Luke chapter 8. Verse 13. Oh wow. Let us go to Luke chapter 8 verse 13. It says, they on the rock are they, which when they hear it, receive with joy, and these have no roots, which for a while believe, and in time of temptations fall off, fall away. The moment that you get tempted, the moment that the times may get a little tough, <laughs> you want to say, man, you want to throw in the towel. And see, we're coming to that point where either you're going to be sincere or insincere. Because a lot of us want to give up when the tough times get hard. Because we don't want it. We don't want it. We hate it. We hate it because it's tough. It builds character. We don't want that character to build. Mm -hmm. That situation to build. Mm -hmm. It makes us be who we don't want to be. It makes us grow. It makes us say, Ugh! But it also shows us where we are. Let us go to Matthew 26. Because this moment here, when they tell people, either you take this, this, this thing that I'm going to put in your hand, or you won't be able to use your money, what you going to do? Are you going to take that and put it in your hand? Or you're going to lose your money. What are you going to do? Matthew 26, 69 through 75. It reads, because Peter said, Oh man, oh man, oh man. But listen to what Peter did. And now Peter sat without in the palace. And a dazzle came to him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. See, the moment that Peter was tempted or challenged or test, he denied, he refused. And it says, And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Listen. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. The moment that you're put up under pressure, what you going to do? The moment that you're put up under pressure, what you going to do? Then it says, And after a while came unto him that, that they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. For thy speech be worried, be worried, be raid thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. And see, Peter was hypocritical. He was insincere in following Yahshua the Hamashiach. Because the moment that he was tested, the moment he failed the test, the moment that you're tested, how are you going to respond to it? Because ain't nothing worth having is easy. 
And I, man, I be wanting to jump up and down and scream and damn holler. Because a lot of times, this life is hard. Life is hard. The obstacles that we deal with on a daily basis is hard. I can understand the, this, this insincere person because you don't want to deal with the consequences. You don't want to go through the struggle because it's too difficult. I don't want to fool with all this mess, man. I'm saying, why can't it just be one way? But that ain't the way it's supposed to be. It's testing you. But insincere people are going to fail the test. People, Peter was insincere at that time. He was just running his mouth like he was bum diggity bum. Man, I'm going to do man. I'm gonna... Man, shut up. That's insincere people. They really don't mean what they say. Because the moment that they're being tested, how they going to respond? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Mark verse um, four, chapter 4, verse 7. And it says, some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up. And choked it. And it yielded no fruit. You're going to have people to be around you to entice you. You got some enticing characters. You're going to have some vulnerable characters. You got some insincere characters. And you got some people that I had to entice you. Listen to it again. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. You're going to have some... Huh? Who? Huh? FedEx? I call him back. And yield no fruit. Okay. Let us go to Genesis. Chapter 3. Seventeen and eighteen. And Adam, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto thy voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thickles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. The word entice means to lure or tempt someone by promoting, promising them something that they like. It is a little manipulative, but in a straightforward way. Let us go to Matthew chapter 26. See, it's, it's, it's very difficult standing on your faith. It's very difficult standing in the midst of it. It's very difficult because you have vulnerable, you have insecure or insincere. You have people that's really enticing you through difficult problems and stuff. Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 through 16. It says, Then one of the disciples called Judas of Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. 
and they and and they covered they covenant with him for thirty pieces of silver, and from that time, he saw opportunities to portray Jesus, or to portray him. You never know why people sell out their souls. You never know why people do the things that they do. You never know. Thorns and thistles are going to be problems. And, and you don't never know what Judas of Iscariot was going through, what he really wanted to, to be able to sell the Messiah out. We don't know if Adam was insecure or insecure in himself when he allowed Eve to tempt him or not. We don't know. We don't know what was this persuasion point where he may just say, okay, I'm going to give in, baby. We don't know what she did, what she said, how she did, whatever it is. To make him give in. That enticement could be whatever it is. But throughout, our, when you're looking at these three characters, they lack the belief system of the word. Your decision is going to be based on your belief system. Your decision is going to be based on your belief system. And where do you get your belief system from? How do you get it? Do you get it by comparing and contrast? Comparing the substance? Comparing the Bible to everything that's going on? Or you do you use the Bible at all? Because... What got me was this right here, right? After Jesus, this is very, very, very significant. And we need to understand it. I want us to understand this. Because in this in this parable that he was teaching the disciples, he got it from his own experience. Listen to it carefully. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. John in Jordan. This is the moment that he really started to be able to minister. This is when he first got his baptism. Okay, And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, the spirit like a dove descending on him. He was anointed. This is the moment that he went into the water, got baptized. He was anointed by the Most High. Then it says, There came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This is when the initiation of when the sore put down the, the soul, the, the, the wheat. He put down the soul. This is when everything is the beginning of his life. This is the beginning of his ministry. He had to be baptized. He had to be anointed by the Most High. But he had to go through the temptational phase. See, Yahshua had to go through that temptational phase in order to show himself worthy of being who he said he is. Okay, and it says, Immediately the Spirit driven him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. See, when you really examine Yahshua's life, he teaches you how to deal with the obstacles at your most vulnerable point. He was in the wilderness, even though it may be an allegory to some people, but even though at the most vulnerable point of your life, 
He was without food and water 40 days. At his most vulnerable point of his life, what did he decide to do? Did he decide to give in to the temptations of the Hashitan, or did he decide to stand on the word? Did he decide to continue his mission? Did he con continue to decide to move on his purpose? And see, that's something that we really got to sit down and analyze about us as a people, as a person. Am I going to be vulnerable? Am I going to be insincere? Or am I going to be, be able to be enticed? Because if you say, if you have been listening to me, you have been, you feel like you know the word a little bit. I'm about done. How you live your life depends on your understanding of the word. Are you going to be able to stand within that moment? You got to be able to understand that about you and yourself. Understand where you are and what you need to improve on. Because if you don't want to face your reality and say, I know I'm very vulnerable. I know I'm gullible. Man, I know I'm gullible. I know I really don't mean what I say when I come to church. I know I just left the clock, 2 o'clock Saturday night, and I'm going to church. 8 o'clock Sunday morning, praise and worship. I know I'm being hypocritical, all good, dog. And as soon as I get out of church, I'm going to go get me a bottle of liquor and drink it up at the liquor house. Or the enticement part where, man, I know she, that girl over there, know she look good. Oh, man, I'm broke, busting, and destroyed. I'm finna go sell me some dope. Or whatever it may be. That's why he was teaching you his parables because he experienced that. Let us go back to Mark chapter 4 verse 8. And last one, 7 and 8. 8. Because then I'm going to break it back down to verse 25. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit. And that sprung up and increased. And brought forth some 30 and some 60. It's Psalm 104. Everybody, everybody measuring me. That's something I need to understand. Everybody amount is not going to be the same. My audience may just be this hundred people. I have to accept that. My audience just may be this hundred people. And who participate with whatever I got going on. Out of the hundred, I may get three. And I just have to accept that. I can't be mad. I got to be able to be content with the amount of people that I have. And bless and promote other people. Let us go to Acts 17. Seventeen eleven, and it reads, and these were more noble than those in the Thessalonicus, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, and also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. When you really start to compare the, the Bible with the substance of reality, it'll make you really search out the scriptures daily. It'll make you want to stand with integrity. Because integrity means a fundamental component of character and involves the ability to engage in ethical, correct behavior regardless of external pressure. See, all the first three, they broke because of external pressure. Are you going to break because of what the Fed coin may do to you? 
Are you going to break because of what the Federal Reserve may do? Are you going to break because of your marriage may be falling apart? Are you, are you having problems in your marriage? Are you going to break because you might have lost your job? Are you going to break because of the pressures that's in the external realm? Are you going to lose your integrity because of what's going on on the outside of you? Because that's what it's all about. Your integrity at this point in time. Let's go to Colossians 1 and 6. Colossians 1 and 6 me is, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit as it doeth also in you. Sincere the day ye hear of it, and knew the grace of El in truth. As ye also learn of Ephesus, our fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ? See, when you're dealing in integrity, you become more faithful. You do it. It's hard, but you got to do what you got to do. Integrity does not allow you to fall up under the pressures of the world. You can see a thousand dollars on a counter somewhere because you're so strong in your faith you don't mess with it because you don't know what that money right there for. And you're not going to put yourself in that situation to fall prey to it. 1 Peter 2 and 2 and I'm finished. 1 through 3. 1 Peter 2 one through three. And it says, Wherefore, laying aside all the malice and all the gall and the hypocrisies and the envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere, the, the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Listen to that. As newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have taste that Yahuwah is gracious. So when your faith, when you have a faith of the mustard seed, verse 24, 25 is understandable now. Listen, because when you have your belief system is strong, it allows you to stand on integrity in the moments of trials and tribulations in life. I remember I was going to one church and the guy said, I'm never going to allow somebody to take me to go to hell. Because... How you live your life depends on your understanding of the word. He understood that you're going to go through trials and tribulations. He understood that he's going to go through adversity. He understood all this stuff. And when you understand it, you, you would deal with it the way, according to scripture. That's why this is so important. It says, it is like a grain of mustard seed. Your faith is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is grown, sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. When you start to have faith, you're going to go through some adversities. You're going to go through some challenges. You're going to go through some situations. And it's going to be less than all. Your faith is going to be smaller than the problem. But the more you grow in your faith, the bigger your faith comes and the less your problems be. That's what basically it's saying. The more you increase in your faith, the less your problems become. Because you know who you believe in. And it says, but when it is sown, it is grown up 
and become greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadows of it. Your faith, once you allow your faith to grow through the adversities of life, you'll be able to help so many other people. But as long as you continue to fail and fail and fail and fail, you ain't able to help nobody. Because you don't, your faith is not strong enough to help nobody else. You'll be a hypocritical person. You'll be an insincere person. You'll be a person of enticement. Girl, gonna need that man. He ain't no good. Because why are you telling that person that? Because that's what you've been doing. Only strong people going to give you strong advice. Only weak people going to give you weak advice. Only crazy people going to give you crazy advice. And how they live their life is depending on how they interpret the word. Listen to a fool when you want to. It's going to cause you to lose everything that you have. So that's the most teachings for the day. Let me pray. And I hope you got something out of it. You know, because we got we get ready to deal with some stuff and how you deal with it will be based on how you understand the word. And what's going on in reality. Abba, as we come to you today, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory. Abba, we thank you for everything you have done and what you continue to do. Abba, we just ask that you just continue to be with us and guide us and lead us and cover us. Let us hear the way you want us to hear, see the way you want us to see, and speak the way you want us to speak. Give us strength where we're weak. Give us your word when we're, when we're vulnerable. And give us encouragement when we're being enticed. But also, Father, let us stand on integrity, your in words, so that we can have integrity. Protect us as we travel to and from the destinations and let us and be with us as we go to and from our destination in the next week. And in all these things we pray in your higher name. So let it be. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Y'all have a blessed one. Nothing is the same anymore Everything's changing I really can't explain what I'm feeling When I look outdoors Society is falling All the earth is calling How much more pain can she endure I believe Children used to go outside and play. Nowadays, when you see them, the phone be glued to their face. Am I tripping to do it? Seem like humans losing their weight. Families are dysfunctional. They don't even burn no more. Our elders used to be wise, but now they under my control. Glued to the program and set. I meant TV. Nothing is the same. Not even the food we eat. Fluoride all in the water, making their hearts to be honest. It feels like I'm surrounded by a bunch of zombies. I would be lying if I said I didn't see all this coming. That's why I left the city and bought a house in the country, telling both my youngins. Nothing is the same anymore. Everything's changing, I really can't explain what I'm seeing when I look outdoors. Society is falling, Mother Earth is calling. How much more pain can she endure? I believe. Some crazy times, which is why I stay in meditation just to ease my mind. I can feel it deep inside. Something's about to happen soon. Soon, like 12, 21, 20, 20, something cosmic. On that day, pay close attention to your body. It's the powers that's inside it. We be activated only if you in alignment. Sorry, my bad. Let me get back on topic. Uh, look, order out of chaos. Civil war, knocking at the door. It's obvious these devils want control, but I'm not going for it. Hey, they gonna have to scrap with me. I can't can't wait, cause that'll be the day I unleash the beast. Nothing is the same anymore. Everything's changing, I really can't explain what I'm feeling when I look outdoors.